Hello and welcome to the Smart Facilities edition of the Things Conference. My name is Alexander Overtom. Today I'm going to talk to you about LoRaWAN and LTM and why this is such a happy marriage. Um, I'm responsible for business development and customer projects within the Things Industries and I will have Afsal Mangal with me uh, to um, talk about the carrier perspective on why this is such a great marriage. Uh, and he's from IoT Creators, which is a subsidiary of uh, Deutsche Telekom. Now, smart facilities, uh, it makes a lot of sense that our first vertical conference is about smart facilities because this is simply a huge vertical. Um, on our networks, TTN and TTI, we have about two thirds uh, that are related to smart facilities. And we also see that there is a lot of availability of very good devices that uh, can be applied within this domain. And smart facilities, um, I think, is uh, a sweet spot for LoRaWAN, uh, not just because the LoRaWAN gateways, these indoor gateways, uh, are very low cost, um, but also because it's simply very easy to build private networks with LoRaWAN and the device ecosystem, um, you know, is, is well established. And now with the um, addition of uh, an LTE or LTM backhaul to your uh, to your LoRaWAN gateway, um, you now all of a sudden can build private networks anywhere where you want it inside or outside a city. Um, and this uh, allows you to build these, um, you know, spots of connectivity uh, just about anywhere uh, and, um, uh, you know, have your own network, define your own quality of service, your own coverage, etc., without being um, dependent on a, a network operator uh, for your LoRaWAN connectivity. So this is the topology of the network. You have the, the sensors that communicate with the, with the LoRaWAN gateways. And then the LoRaWAN gateways communicate over LTEM. That's their backhaul and, uh, and LTEM, um, uh, network then forwards the data through its own APN to, uh, the things industries or the things network. Um, uh, and that's where you will be able to get the data from your devices. Now, what are the benefits of LTM, uh, adding LTM to LoRaWAN? The, in the, the gateways are low cost, uh, not just because they are indoor uh, and you don't need, um, you know, higher rated uh, IP uh, casing, but also because the LTM module on those gateways will be um, um, more affordable than the um, LTE um, module. Also, the data costs are going to be extremely low. LTE is not ubiquitous yet, but this is moving very fast. Uh, and also the expectation already is, is that, that, that the data costs is going to be very low. So also your operational cost of maintaining your LoRaWAN network will go down using LTEM. Uh, then the indoor penetration is uh, better, better than LTE. Um, and this will actually allow you to also uh, provision gateways that are deep indoor in a basement where, you know, the building management or the building systems tend to be. Um, so, um, you can actually rely on, on a good signal, uh, somewhere deep, uh, deep in a, inside a building. Then the device ecosystem, uh, as I said, is very well established for LoRaWAN. So what you can do is rather than com uh, connecting your, uh, device through LTM directly. In fact, let it uh, connect over LoRa and then to an LTM uh, uh, backhaul uh, because that will give you access to this huge device ecosystem. Um, and there are many off the shelf devices so you can get going in, in no time. And this is actually not the case with LTM devices as yet, but this is also growing, of course. Uh, then there's the end to end security, uh, not just on the LoRa when, uh, on the LoRa uh, layer, but also uh, on the, um, on the uh, cellular layer because the carrier can run the LoRaWAN stack inside their own APN. Um, and it's of course, you know, very well suited for standalone networks uh, because you don't have to be dependent on the local area network from a building uh, or a building operator. You can just deploy a gateway without, you know, needing any connectivity, just needing power uh, to power up the gateway. And then, um, yeah, gateway provisioning uh, is, uh, in fact, very simple using the Things Industries also, uh, just uh, scanning a QR code and you will have the gateway uh, working and well and rightly configured 
in your um, in your account and then going forward in the future um, you know having a service that provides the last mile of the connectivity where you can rely on 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 a external third party that does the let's say the uptime uh, of the hardware of the gateways and only you know makes you uh, responsible for dealing with the data that comes from the devices and this last mile service is also something that is within better reach with this combined um, LTM and um, uh, LoRaWAN proposition. Uh, another way to apply LTM and LoRaWAN is here in this device. This is from Telespor. They do sheep tracking in Norway. Um, and these are vast areas of land. So there's not LoRaWAN connectivity everywhere. Uh, this device has an LR1110 um, uh, module from Semtech. Uh, which is good for uh, for um, uh, for uh, defining location, and if there is no LoRaWAN coverage, then the location of these devices can be transmitted through the LTM um, uh, connectivity, and otherwise it will uh, send via uh, via LoRaWAN. So this is also an interesting combination of the two technologies. Um, so I want to give the word to Afzal, who's going to talk about uh, why it's interesting from an operator perspective. There you go, Afzal. Uh, my name is Afzal Mangal. Super happy to be here again at the Things Conference. Thanks for having me here. So, um, yeah, I'm working for Deutsche Telekom IoT. Deutsche Telekom IoT is obviously part of Deutsche Telekom, just like T-Mobile, T-Systems, and we have some more brands and companies out there. And I'm working in the iotcreators.com team. iotcreators.com is a platform where we make uh, our connectivity uh, and SIM capabilities more accessible, more easy to start, and more developer-friendly. Uh, for example, um, we deliver connectivity um, with uh, the support for webhook integrations, and we support um, um, connectivity based on MQTT, lightweight machine-to-machine -machine co-op, and uh, some other protocols as well. So that's what uh, I'm doing. But today I have the pleasure to tell you a little bit more about LTM and LoRa and a partnership uh, between TTI and Deutsche Telekom IoT. And actually, um, I've been discussing a potential partnership with the Things Industries already for a couple uh, of years. But in the past, it was pretty hard to really kick off a partnership for two reasons. One, simply because we didn't really know where to start and 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 how to collaborate exactly. Um, and uh, the second uh, reason is because um, operators and um, also Deutsche Telekom were not very eager to collaborate with non-3GPP technologies. We were very much focused on uh, pushing our own technologies, 2G, 3G, 4G, narrowband, and LTM, uh, and not really open to work together with um, LoRa or uh, BLE or Sigfox, for example. But today that's changing. And, uh, and, and how did that change uh, exactly? Um, well, we started to see that, um, um, yeah, we cannot avoid anymore and we cannot ignore that the LoRa ecosystem is far ahead of narrowband IT and, and, and LTM. Um, and we cannot ignore that big customers and companies are scaling with LoRa and that there are a lot of ready to use devices running on LoRa out there available on the market. Um, so that's one reason. Uh, why we became more open and why we started to embrace other technologies as Deutsche Telekom. Um, and we also realized that there is no connectivity type to fulfill the needs for all use cases out there. There are use cases which need narrowband, use cases which need LoRa, use cases which need both, uh, and use cases which um, are um, uh, relying on other technologies as well. So we started to realize that we need to embrace other technologies. And we also saw a gap in the market that we could fulfill together. So what is this exactly? Um, even though a lot of customers and use cases are already scaling, uh, together with TTI, we noticed that some use cases are ready to scale, but not scaling yet. And why is that? Well, if you look at the LoRa gateway today, um, and you're using a wired gateway, and you need to scale and install a lot of them, it brings a lot of physical hassle because you need to pull wires and cables. But if you go to a Wi-Fi gateway, you don't have the physical problem, but you have the problem of adding a new IP device. And that 
doesn't really work when you talk about a corporate environment and big enterprises. A new IP device is a big thing uh, because it could be a security threat. So you need to comply with IT policies and security policies. And then if you go to uh, 3G, 4G gateways, it solves um, uh, uh, some other problems and it works for a lot of use cases, but not if you need deeper indoor penetration, not if you need to use these gateways in a container, in a basement or in a smart building. So that's basically what we are kicking off together with the Things Industries. So um, we are launching a trial offer and we are launching, and hopefully after the trial offer, um, a real commercial offer for a LCM gateway for LoRa devices. Um, it solves the problem uh, of uh, uh, adding uh, an additional IP device in the local network because that's basically not the case. It runs on um, telco connectivity. Um, and uh, no touch provisioning because it comes with a pre-proficient and pre-activated SIM. Deeper indoor penetration, LTM is um, uh, has, has um, a much better um, deeper indoor penetration when you compare it to 2G, 3G, and 4G. And last but not least is the more secure backhaul because you can uh, get the benefits of telco great security. So what do I mean by telco great security? Obviously, a SIM always uses the traditional SIM encryption that you all also have with the SIM cards that you use in your phone. And um, uh, the APN security or the IPsec tunnel to send your traffic from A to B. And um, we announced this partnership already back in January at the large Things conference um, just to find out if there is a real market interest and market potential for this. And I'm very proud to say that more than 120 companies signed up already. We did a lot of interviews with many of them and found out that they indeed are waiting for such a gateway, especially for the uh, easy provisioning and the deeper indoor penetration. And most of the customers that we have talked to so far, not all of them, but most of them are, um, as expected, going to use this gateway in, in smart buildings. Um, uh, we are launching this trial program where you can buy a trial gateway to find out if it really works for you um, somewhere in the summer. Um, I believe that Alexander is going to tell a little bit more about that. And um, he will also tell you how you can get access to our trial program and basically to join us um, in this early phase of this very cool new gateway. So um, thanks a lot for having me here. And now I hand over back to Alexander. Wish you a great day. All right, that was interesting. Thank you, Afsal. Uh, let me also give the word to Microtik because Microtik is going to be the first uh, provider of a LoRaWAN gateway that has an LTM backhaul. Um, it's expected uh, this summer. Um, so uh, please, Microtik, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about the Microtik Knop um, gateway that you are, are going to release? Hi, I'm Walters from Microtik. Let's talk about the Internet of Things. You have already seen our devices for LoRa. We have brought the cost-effective and flexible Microtik approach to the IoT world. Now it's time for the next step. NAT is our IoT gateway. It uses very low bandwidth, low cost cellular connection for IoT. Narrow band or MB and CATM. It is supported by many mobile operators all over the world. NAT supports protocols like HTTPS and MQTT that allow sending sensor data to the cloud or local server. What can it do? Well, with the Bluetooth interface, you can use the NAT for asset tracking and telemetry based on Bluetooth advertisement packets. NAT can send any Bluetooth advertisement data, iBeacon, Edistone or any other format. It also has very powerful filters, forwarding only relevant packets and ignoring others. How would this work in the real life, you ask? Well, let's imagine a hospital. Lots of expensive assets moving across huge buildings. Tools, meds, equipment, you name it. Everything is moved around all the time. And usually hospitals are spending a lot of resources on inventory checking. But let's fix that. Let's add low-cost Bluetooth tag on all the important equipment and place NOT gateway in every storage room. Now the hospital management will always know if the equipment is returned to its place. But why stop there? You can also add a temperature sensor to all the critical medical supplies and use the NAT to keep track. So the possibilities are really endless. The NAT supports also a Modbus protocol. You can use the NAT as a TCP bridge from wired Modbus sensor to send readings to Modbus server. 
So yes, NOT brings wireless connectivity to wired sensors, such as electricity meters and relays. As for narrowband, NOT supports NB-CAT-M low bandwidth, low cost backup connectivity in case of a lost Ethernet connection, or it could be used as a management channel for your network. NB-CAT-M monthly plan is much cheaper than LTE, so why spend extra money on the bandwidth you don't need? For example, you can manage not powered vending machines with liquid and temperature sensors with only a few megabytes per day. The NAT is a truly universal device with a lot of connectivity options and protocol support. It features 2.4 GHz wireless, 200 Mbit Ethernet ports with PoE in and PoE out, and a micro USB port. The device also has a GPIO header. You can use it for relay control, logical input output sensor connectivity, voltage metering, or home automation. There is also a separate NOT version with LoRa support coming soon. You will be able to use it as a LoRa gateway with MB CAT M connectivity. This brings low cost connectivity for LoRa sensors in remote locations. So stay tuned. Make sure to check out our IoT products and start saving your time and money like never before. Contact your Microtech distributors for more information. All right, thank you very much. Now, the call to action, if you want, if you're interested to get access to this device, including the LTEM SIM from Deutsche Telekom, uh, pre-provisioned to the Things Network, uh, please leave your details uh, under this uh, URL. There's a little sign-up form. And if you do so, we will get back in touch with you um, uh, so that you have early access to this, uh, to this product. Thank you for watching and uh, please enjoy the rest of the conference. Mm -hmm.